Hey everybody, welcome back to the video. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, my experiences with the fish shell, the friendly interactive shell I think is what it stands for. Um, I've been using it full time for about three weeks-ish, maybe two weeks, maybe a little longer than that, I'm not sure, maybe a month even. I'm not sure. It's been a while. Um, I've tried fish before, but I've never actually like changed my shell to it. Just I've installed it and used it for you know half a minute and switched back. Um, and but this time I decided to you know what I'm gonna really try it because DistroTube and some of the guys at the the Destination Linux podcast really enjoy fish and they consider it the best thing since sliced bread. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm gonna figure out what the hell they're talking about. Why why they think it's so good. Um, and so I switched and it's good. It's good, but it's not great. It's not, <laughs> it's not the best thing since sliced bread. It's not the best terminal or it's not the best shell out there. I don't think it's just as I have. All right. So let's talk about the good things. Let's be a little bit organized about this. Um, if you're going to do something like, um, let's see here, let's say I wanted to use, uh, I, I gotta come up with a good example of, uh, <laughs> what fish does, um, and I'm completely dropped. So let's, actually, let's, let's do, uh, Neomot. And y you see how here, how it, um, has auto suggestions? Like, you can add auto-suggestions to, like, ZSH with a plugin, but what this does, it, if you do dash dash and then tab over, oh, it's supposed to work anyways. Alright, yeah, so if you do tab after one, it'll actually tell you all of the options, and it gets these directly from a man page. Um, and it'll tell you what, you know, what they do and everything, and then you can just do that. I'm not sure why it won't do, do it for double. And you can just tap through them. That's really cool. ZSH won't do that. There may be a plugin or something. I'm not sure. Um, but it will do that for any terminal program. It's really cool. Um, that's really nice. Um, but here's the thing. Outside of that, I have no reason um, to like fish. It's just ZSH. Um, and there's several reasons why I don't like it, which I'll get to in a minute. But it, it doesn't add any functionality for me personally that I c didn't have with my ZSH setup. Now, um, it's funny because I did a vi video yesterday on DWM and I was bitching and moaning about how, uh, you know, yet in order to make it f the DWM function, you know, f functional, you had to go through and add a whole bunch of patches and stuff like that. And it was, you know, I made a whole uh, analogy about you know, taking the steering wheel out of a car doesn't make the car less bloat, it just makes it not work. And that's the way I feel about DWM. You have to add a whole bunch of things to actually make it functional. Um, with shells, I'm actually kind of similar. Fish has all the stuff that I had to go through and add in piecemeal to ZSH to make it functional. Um, but I think because I've, I had already done the work to make ZSH awesome, Fish doesn't have any appeal to me. Um, because it does everything my ZSH build did. Um, um, and if that was just where it stopped, if that was where the, the, the story ended, I'd probably just stay on fish. And I still may just stay on fish because I've gotten used to it. Um, but there are several things about fish that just aren't cool. So, um, there are certain things that don't work. Like, um, say I, say I had some, you know, command or whatever here in the terminal and I had forgotten to add sudo. Um, in bash or zsh I could go sudo bang bang and then it would you know it would add sudo to whatever the thing is this is just going to be run sudo and then two exclamation points which is you know you know not really what you want uh -huh. and you know it would sudo the last command that was there anyways um fish won't do that that's the thing that I use all the time because I'm always forgetting to put sudo begin especially when I'm editing something in you know like uh like an environment variable or something like that you know if you get into the one of the the bin files chances are you're going to need sudo to edit it especially if it's in you know in you know 
uh, local or um, you know slash USR or whatever your user files um, you know you get in there and you make your edits and you realize that you can't do it without root privileges and pseudo bang bang is something that I would always use now I understand that you can add this via um, you know your fish file so This is my fish config file, um, and you can add things um, to it. I'm pretty sure I stole some of this stuff from my ZSH file. This is just all my aliases; they all work the same. Um, you can and unlike ZSH, you can declare Z uh, environment variables right here in the config file. That's cool, um, but I don't. My problem is I don't want to have to go through and do the work again. And I think that's where I'm having the problem with fish is those little things that just won't work. So the pseudo bang bang, there are some scripts that won't work in fish because fish is not POSIX compliant. Um, now, when I first thought about fish, when I first heard about fish, I was led to believe that no scripts would work. And that's not the case. Some bash scripts will work. It'll just depend on. So if I do that, go back up here in uh, CD documents scripts. If I go into um, do 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 just um. If I go into here, if you if you used bat this like if you call out a specific shell, uh, it might or might not work. So here I've called out actual bash, um, and I think if I'd um, wall, I yeah I did that in this one too. I might have done that in all of them, but if you've just used slash sh instead of bash, um, it, you know it might or might not work. Again, I'm not quite sure what things it does work. Some I've just noticed that sometimes. My script won't work, and that's not a great thing, <laughs> you know. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, so like this one here is just the S H, and this this is just I mean it's just a simple uh, script that I used in BSPWM in order to kill th to kill a program. Um, that's literally all it is. Uh, so and, and the thing is, if you're using ship to fish as your shell. And your one of your fish your scripts just don't work um, without changing it over to whatever fish will use you know will actually read. That's a problem. And while I haven't encountered it as much as I thought it was, like I said, when I first heard a fish, it would you know I thought that it wouldn't run, run any bash script at all. But that's not the case. It will run some of them. It just is very picky and syntax so like if your bash script has like an equal in it somewhere it won't run and i'm not sure why uh if or if you even if you run a, a command here in some in you know in like just the regular you know sh sh you know shell it won't if and you has an equal sign or certain symbols i'm i'm pretty sure uh like like chevron's work um, sometimes, um, but equals doesn't work. Sometimes I've noticed the dollar sign returns a signal or, or an error, um, but not all the time. It's really weird. Um, so, so some final thoughts. I will say all this is that if you choose to use fish, you'll be happy because Fish is good. Um, fish is... Uh, I think the best way to put it would be... Fish would be a great shell to start off on. If you're a new user to Linux... Or a new user to the terminal... At all... Like in whatever operating system you're in... Fish would be great to start out on. Because you don't have any baggage... Or any prior work... That you've put into your shell... Uh, to hold you back. Or to make you feel like that it was... A waste of time. For me, I've put all this work into making ZSH work, and I kind of want to use ZSH because I've done that work. Even though, for the most part now, ZSH and Fish for me would be almost exactly the same. The only difference being that you know the bang bang thing would work right out of the box. Um, so I think that's where I stand with Fish. Is Fish is just it's a good beginner's shell, and it'd be good for everybody. Um, 
but if you've done work to make the shell you use now, you know, the way you want it, um, there's no good reason to use fish for me. Um, I really enjoyed um, oh my ZSH, and I understand that a lot of people consider that blo bloat, and I understand that there's a version of for fish, um, but I went through and I customized, you know, with oh, oh my ZSH, and my shell looks the way I want it to work, it has all the things I want it to do, things work exactly the way I want it to work, and while that, the same is in fish, the same goes for fish, it's just, um... I've done the work, you know, I mean, it just makes it feel like if I switched to fish, I've done all that stuff I did in ZSH, it, you know, would have been a waste of time. Anyway, so that is um, my v, my very brief, very scattered thoughts on my three mo three weeks with fish. Um, it's meh. I, I'm not attached to it. Um, and f I'll probably end up going back to ZSH. Um, I think I do want to play a little bit more around with customizing the prompt itself. Um, because this is kind of, I mean, it's dumb looking. Um, but that's probably the last thing I'll do with fish, and then I'll go back to ZSH where, um, I'm comfortable. Z ZSH is my security blanket. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure when my next video for this channel will be. We're coming up on Thanksgiving, so the video schedule will be a little bit wonky. But anyways, um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.